Today I'm going to talk about the um, bubble hydrodynamics in the uh, slurry reactor for Fischer-Tropsch synthesis. For background on the uh, Fischer-Tropsch synthesis, I refer you to my publications co-authored with uh, C. For background on the uh, Bubble column hydrodynamics, see my uh, publications listed in my uh, Google Scholar profile. Um, furthermore, the two other presentations on my YouTube channel, the rise of bubbles and the flow regime transitions that uh, provide you further background on the uh, bubble column hydrodynamics. Bubble column slurry reactors are used by uh, the Sasol Corporation in Qatar for uh, fissure drop synthesis. Here is a photograph of uh, the uh, bubble column slurry reactors that are being shipped to Qatar. gives you a uh, indication of the uh, sizes of the uh, slurry reactors used for commercial operations. Here's another photograph of the uh, fischer trop slurry reactor being lifted by cranes for installation on the uh, site in Qatar. Again, this gives you a uh, um, good indication of the large sizes of the bubble columns that are used in commercial practice. Before we delve into the uh, bubble column um, hydrodynamics, Let's get a feel for the uh, operating conditions for a Fischer-Tropsch slurry reactor. Typically, the uh, gas velocities entering the uh, FT uh, bubble column slurry reactor are in the range of 20 centimeters per second to 40 centimeters per second. The reactor dimensions are shown here approximately. The column diameters may range from 6 to 10 meters in diameter. The column height could range from 30 to 40 meters. The uh, bubble column slurry reactor for FT synthesis operates at uh, pressures ranging from 30 bars to 40 bars. Another important um, factor that uh, is important for the bubble column hydrodynamics is that the syngas entering the reactor suffers um, a reduction in the volume because the uh, syngas is converted to um, hydrocarbons. So there is about a 60% reduction in the volumetric flow rate of the gas as it uh, passes up the column. Due to the extremely um, high heat of reaction, the uh, reactor has uh, cooling tubes installed in it in order to remove uh, the uh, heat generated during uh, the exothermic FT reaction. Typically, the cooling tubes are about uh, 50 uh, millimeters in size. And to give you an indication of the uh, intertube spacing, I show here a uh, um, mock-up reactor that was used to um, investigate the bubble column hydrodynamics. This gives you an indication how close 
the cooling tubes are. So another factor that needs to be taken into consideration is the, is the influence of the presence of the cooling tubes on the uh, bubble column uh, reactor hydrodynamics. So the key question we address in our presentation is, what is the flow regime under which the FT reactor operates given these set of conditions? It's important to note that uh, the catalyst used in the uh, for the Fischer-Tropsch reaction is uh, in the range of 40 to 50 micrometers and uh, the catalyst concentration is uh, about 20 to 35 volume percent based on the liquid phase in the reactor so it's a highly concentrated uh, catalyst within the liquid phase in the FT reactor. So we ask the question, how is the hydrodynamics influenced by uh, the superficial uh, gas velocity? How is it influenced by the properties of the liquid? How is it influenced by the uh, catalyst concentrations? To address all these questions, my group at the University of Amsterdam conducted a uh, comprehensive set of uh, investigation of the bubble column slurry reactor hydrodynamics. The uh, findings are all published in the literature as uh, evidenced in the uh, publications on my Google Scholar profile. And I show you some uh, video animations to illustrate some key points of the uh, bubble column slurry hydrodynamics. Tetradecane that has a uh, viscosity of 2.2 millipascal seconds and a density of 763 kilograms per cubic meter mimics the fish tropes liquid at reaction temperature. So uh, let us have a look at the hydrodynamics for a system in which tetradecane is sparged with the air in a glass column at uh, a velocity of five millimeters per second. We have a uniform bubbly flow. If the uh, let us increase the gas velocity to uh, one centimeter per second. Again, we have uniform bubbly flow. Let's uh, increase the uh, superficial gas velocity further to two centimeters per second. Uniform bubbly flow. Five centimeters per second. Uniform bubbly flow. And you can see a lot of bubbles. So the uh, homogeneous flow regime prevails from 5 millimeters per second to 5 centimeters per second. Remember that tetradecane mimics the FT liquid at reaction temperature, but the liquid also has catalyst suspended in it. Now, adding catalyst to the liquid increases the effective viscosity. So let's uh, examine the influence of uh, increased liquid viscosity on the uh, bubble hydrodynamics. 
about experiments with uh, talus oil that has a viscosity of uh, 75 millipascal seconds and a density of 862 kilograms per cubic meter. Talus oil mimics the FT slurry phase, that is the liquid plus suspended catalyst. Let's uh, examine the bubble hydrodynamics at a superficial gas velocity of 2 millimeters per second. We already see that the uh, flow regime is heterogeneous. We have small bubbles and um, also larger bubbles. Let's increase the uh, gas velocity to 7 millimeters per second and you see large bubbles coexisting with small bubbles and rising through the column. Let's increase the uh, gas velocity to 1.1 centimeters per second and you see again heterogeneous uh, flow regime with large and small bubbles co co coexisting. At a uh, Superficial gas velocity of uh, 2.3 centimeters per second. Again, we see uh, the heterogeneous flow regime. So the conclusion to be drawn here with the highly viscous uh, talus oil is even at very, very low superficial gas velocities, we have a het the heterogeneous flow regime and uh, the uh, transition velocity is practically zero. In other words, you sparge gas through the column of a containing a viscous liquid and you immediately form large and small bubbles. You can try this experiment at home by uh, bubbling um, air through uh, corn syrup or maple syrup and you will uh, immediately notice that we have heterogeneous flow regime even at very very low superficial gas velocities. So there is a huge difference between the hydrodynamics of uh, a bubble column containing uh, tetradecane, a low viscosity uh, liquid, and talus oil that contains a high viscosity liquid. Let's examine another set of experiments in which the catalyst concentration in the liquid phase is kept constant at 5 volume percent and the uh, superficial gas velocity is increased from um, 2 centimeters per second to 5 centimeters per second to 10 centimeters per second to 16 centimeters per second to 20 centimeters per second. We uh, examine the hydrodynamics in, of these systems in turn, starting with uh, 2 centimeters per second gas velocity. The system appears to be nearly homogeneous with no large bubbles being visible. Increasing the gas velocity to 5 centimeters per second results in the heterogeneous flow regime. We also see some uh, small bubbles uh, going down the column. Let's increase the gas velocity to 10 centimeters per second. Large bubbles going through the center, small bubbles descending down the column. 16 centimeters per second. 
large bubbles going up the center, small bubbles descending the column along the sides. 20 centimeters per second. Gas velocity. Large bubbles going up the center, small bubbles descending down the column. Let's examine the uh, influence of increased slurry concentrations on uh, bubble column hydrodynamics. We maintain the superficial gas velocity constant at 16 centimeters per second, and we look at the hydrodynamics of a bubble column with uh, no suspended catalyst, with 5% uh, catalyst in the liquid phase, 10% catalyst in the liquid phase, 20% catalyst in the liquid phase, and 25% catalyst in the liquid phase. Um, so let's have a look at the uh, video recordings. First, we start with uh, a gas liquid system without catalyst. We have uh, the heterogeneous flow regime with uh, large bubbles going up through the center and uh, finely dispersed small bubbles. Let's increase the catalyst concentration to 5%. You see the large bubbles, but the uh, small bubbles are significantly smaller in number because the presence of the catalyst particles leads to coalescence of the small bubbles and uh, this coalescence results in uh, an increase in the large bubble population. Let's look at the operation with 10% uh, catalyst in the liquid phase. Practically no small bubbles. You see the large bubbles traversing up the column. Same story with 20% catalyst. Twenty five per cent catalyst. To summarize the findings, increasing catalyst concentration reduces the uh, small bubble population, and the small population small bubble population is virtually destroyed. And uh, we only have large bubbles at uh, high catalyst concentrations. This slide summarizes the results from the uh, previous two slides on the influence of uh, increasing superficial gas velocity and increasing slurry concentration on uh, bubble column hydrodynamics. For a given slurry concentration, Increasing gas velocity promotes a transition from homogeneous public flow to heterogeneous flow. For the same superficial gas velocity, increasing the slurry concentration promotes coalescence of the small bubbles, increases the uh, large bubble population, and if the slurry concentration is large enough, we only have large bubbles in the system. If you look at the gas holdup, increasing the uh, slurry concentration from 0 to 36 volume percent, there is a substantial decrease in the gas holdup because the small bubbles get essentially destroyed because of uh, increased bubble coalescence leading to increased number of large bubbles in the system. An important message to emerge from the uh, previous slides is that uh, for operation of the uh, Fischer-Tropsch bubble column slurry reactor, conditions 
that are representative of commercial operations, i.e. superficial gas velocities higher than about 20 centimeters per second, catalyst concentrations in the liquid phase larger than about 20 volume percent, we uh, have a preponderance of large bubbles in the reactor and practically no small bubbles because the small bubbles coalesce to form large bubbles. So the question arises, is the transfer of gas from the large bubbles to the liquid phase good enough for syngas to be transported from the gas to the liquid phase for subsequent reaction? To answer this question, we uh, carried out uh, an investigation in which uh, we followed the uh, births and deaths of large bubbles by use of high-speed camera because the uh, coalescence and breakup phenomena of the large bubbles occurs too quickly for the naked eye to follow. I show three video recordings. Firstly, for an air water system at uh, a superficial gas velocity of 10 centimeters per second. And this video recording is at uh, 4,500 frames per second. Then I show you a video recording of uh, a column containing a liquid with 30 percent, uh, 30 volume percent catalyst, in other words, a 30 volume percent slurry operating at a superficial gas velocity of 4 centimeters per second. And uh, the third video recording is for a uh, 30 percent uh, slurry phase operating at a superficial velocity, superficial gas velocity of 35 centimeters per second. The last two videos are recorded at a frame speed of 2,250 frames per second. I would like you to focus on the large bubbles and to see the breakup and recoalescence of the large bubbles. So let's start with an air water system. We see the large bubbles breaking up and reforming as they move through the column. And if we observe this phenomena, it is uh, easy to conclude that there should be no problem with regard to mass transfer from the large bubbles because the large bubbles coalesce and break up very frequently. That was for an air water system. Let's move to a 30% slurry system. Same phenomena, coalescence and breaking up of the large bubbles. So the large bubbles do not remain large. the mass transfer from the large bubbles is significantly enhanced by uh, frequent coalescence and breakup phenomena.